<laughs> go, go, gadget arms engaged. Hey, welcome back to Retro Revival's channel. We are going to get started on the cab of this camper, 76 Dodge Cruiser RV. Long overdue project that we've been going stock. Stock, less than stock. Less than stock, <laughs> everything. So we're going to give it a whole new revamp. Thanks for joining. Now let's go. All right. Sun's out, seat's out. Actually, Again, yeah. uh, we've, we've pulled the seats and put them back in a number of times. Maybe we, this will be the last time we pull them out. That'd be nice. Yeah. So the nice thing about our floor is it's small. The not so nice thing is all the uh, whoop de doos and the uh, cutouts and the different things. Um, we do have a number of projects planned for the interior. Uh, hopefully, one is to quiet it down. Two is to insulate it from noise a little bit. And yeah. heat. And heat. Yes. <laughs> I've never heard any problems with heat. No. Um, that's news to me. But anyway, we'll get onto this and see how it looks here in a little bit. Some of the things we want to fix is this doghouse seal. You can see how they put some silicone in there. Um, that's not doing the trick. So we got a new seal for it. We're fixing the doghouse as we speak. We've got to knock out some of this rusty scale. Then we've got some paint we're going to put down, some kill mat, uh, some rubber mat on top of that. That'll be easier to clean up. We are also got some new gauges that are going to replace this beautiful Kenwood. Um, I hate to see it go, but um, we are not going to have a radio. I am just going to listen to this beautiful lady's voice yeah. all the way to wherever we go. <laughs> <laughs> not that I don't love to hear Christy sing, but I think we're going to add some Bluetooth speakers to the locations of these old uh, speakers here. There's just a couple up front remaining and we'll do away with our head unit and we'll just operate our radio or stereo from our phones. My goodness, what did they do here? Oh. I hope we got the right seal. Try not to mangle it just in case we have to reuse this thing. Uh, <laughs> you're going <laughs> to smash down uh, it is. Yeah, you're not reusing this regardless. Oh, you wanted me not to mess it up. Dang it. Did you wreck it? <laughs> Look at how much silicone's in there. Technically, I don't think I'm the one that wrecked it, but yeah, that's uh, that's not factory. And it's not working. So, yeah, probably have to get the old putty knife out or something. Yeah. Man, I like it better already. Let's just go without. You think you could do a trip without a doghouse altogether? You already know the answer to that. <laughs> <laughs> I could not make it a quarter mile without a doghouse. Yeah, a quarter's being generous. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First okay. things first. Yeah. Are we really sticking with that as our primary source of fire suppression safety? <laughs> Why not? Wouldn't you trust that with your life? <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Gross. Ah. Yeah, I don't even know. That looks seal like it in all the that's um, butyl. Is that from us? <laughs> we probably did that. <laughs> oh, oops. Right, well. Don't be too judgy. Yeah, that's, right. That was us. Look at all the sand that's in there from our trip. No way. Yeah. The no uh, way. hurricane force winds was blowing oh, yeah. sand everywhere. Look at it. That's probably not good. No, it's fine. This thing sucked down more dirt than um, um. <laughs> than an earthworm. I don't know. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> I couldn't. Co I couldn't come up with anything better. <laughs> right Ready? on. Look how this pushes my cheeks out. <laughs> uh, this Double side really feet. isn't bad. What is that? Bondo? <laughs> no. Uh, it would be a seam seal, oh. but it looks like it's... So don't hit it too hard? Yeah, you don't have to hit it too hard. Just knock the crud off of it. So who's your uh, 
Who's your favorite NASCAR driver? Um. Um. Whoever 27 is. <laughs> <laughs> I call these my Spider Man gloves. <laughs> I don't know. Spider Man gloves. <laughs> Who is that? NASCAR. What about NASCAR? You like NASCAR? No, that's not how it goes. I have no idea. Um, I would Whatever say. Whatever that says. Paul from... Ripper. <laughs> Paul the Ripper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I cannot see a thing. This is <laughs> safety's the worst. <laughs> Right. It's probably why so many people ignore it. Oh my God. I mean, I bought these at Dollar Tree. I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know. Well, OSHA is definitely not going to have you on one of their infomercials. <laughs> <laughs> This takes the paint right off of this rubber. Does it? It's awesome. Oh, totally. Totally awesome. <laughs> The old cat bed. All right, you want to explain what you're doing? Yeah, I have this rust fix. I'm just going to hit a few of these rusty areas. Supposedly, it turns it black just to kind of stop the rust a little bit. All right. Um, it's going to be covered with mat, so we're not overly worried about it. But you just do, it says two or three light coats, no more than two minutes apart. So All right. I'm going to hit it and then forget it. Forget about it. All right, do you want to lift up that mat a little bit and spread underneath There's there? More. There you go, see? Yeah, see? Uh-huh. All right, here's the current situation with our screws. They look kind of funky. We um, got some new ones, so we're going to start adding some of those and see if it makes a difference. So we wanted to do some sound deadener to keep the heat and the noise down. Um, like I said, I wanted to hear Christy to be able to sing to me. And in order for that to happen, we got this kill mat. So the kill mat is a sound deadening mat, just like it sounds. <laughs> and it's got a tin uh, heat shield on there. So what it is, it's uh, sticky on this backside. We'll peel the paper off, put it in place. And then we will roll it into all the cracks and crevices and all the little um, <sighs> nooks and crannies. Yeah, nooks and crannies. That's a good one. Yeah. And we've never used this before. It might be good. It had good reviews, right? I don't yes, know. Yes, it did have good reviews. And so, so we will use this and anything's got to be better than a hot tin plate that we were dealing right. with. Right. Yeah. We definitely need something. Yeah. So. And then we've got other floor mat to go over this, but we'll show you that later. Yep. Let's okay. do it. You better do this side extra good because my feet can't handle this. Yeah, I am aware. It's working. Okay. Yeah, I've already got carpal tunnel from that. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad we don't have any workman's comp. We could be in Florida right now just yeah. enjoying. Right.
It's starting to get cold here. It's today the high was probably like 50, but this coming week it's highs in the 40s, I think, which is no fun. <laughs> Well, this is riveting. I'm so glad everyone tuned in for this today. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it, you know, it's funny. People do like to watch other people work. So, I mean. Oh, I would like to watch other people work. Oh, wait, are you? <laughs> other people work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay, kill mats in. Went in pretty quick. It's looking good. Um, we're still not sure what we're going to do up here in the firewall. We do have a black mat to go around here. Um, if it's too hard to maneuver, we might go with carpet, but plan right now black mat and time to tackle the doghouse. So here's the doghouse in all its glory. It looks a little different than you saw it last. Yeah, had some. Big uh, cracks in it going from top to bottom and also had a, a fairly good sized chunk missing here and a spot down here at the bottom. So we wanted to reuse it and of course we had to bond it back together. Um, what we wound up using is a JB Weld plastic bond and we filled it in initially. What I did was I took the Dremel and I cut, um, I beveled the cracks in it. That way it gives more bonding surface. So I, I cut all the cracks uh, on both sides, beveled the edges is what I'm saying. <laughs> and then I went back and put the JB Weld in here. It's a two-part epoxy. We mixed it up, laid it in there, sanded it initially, and it had sunk a little bit down into the cracks, which is exactly what is uh, ideal. That way it's actually touching, you know, uh, all that surface area. And then I came back over it a second time. And this is what you see now where we have uh, filled in those low spots. Now there is a definite low spot here. We're just going to have to live with it. And you can see this mesh that we used here. Uh, we're going to clean that up the best we can. Probably still going to be some texture there. Not a big deal. I'm going to wind up spray painting this anyway. But anyway, all that stuff set up and everything seems a lot more solid Bef yeah. before it was flexing pretty good whenever you would move of course the upper part would stay um stationary but it would definitely pull apart at the bottom yeah the main thing was stability i mean hopefully aesthetically it'll look okay once we get paint on it if not we'll put one of the fabric things wrapping around and it'll cover most of that Mm -hmm. And we're also going to leave out the ashtray. I know you're bummed out about that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to put a couple USB chargers in there. So that'll be nice too. And hopefully they don't melt from the heat inside there as we get on the road. But if they do, then everyone will know not to try that. This goes against everything I've ever done in a body shop, but we're going to spray it below 50 degrees in the dark. <laughs> um, if any With of it my, all bumpy still. If, yes, and if any of my friends are watching, forgive me. It, there's a bunch of low spots. Should have body filler in it or something or, or 
fiberglass. We're not doing that. We're just going to spray over it and it's going to be great. <laughs> Maybe. So we are going with black, which the floor mats are black. If we decide we don't want black and we want it tan or some other color, we'll just take it out and hose it down again. But the whole dash is black, like all the the plastic stuff up there, so shouldn't be too bad. Tyler said he wanted to spray because he thinks I hose it on too heavy. <laughs> I think he goes on too light though, so mm -hmm. somewhere in the middle might be nice. Alright, you ready? Yeah. Well, I will say this seems to be drying weird. Huh, weird. <laughs> so we'll have to see what happens when it dries. Um, I still can't believe we did black. Oh, look at the sunset. Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Okay, I still can't believe we did black. I have a feeling in a future video this sucker's going to be green. But for now, it's black. We'll come back through with another coat. That is the prettiest doghouse I've ever seen. So it's in the garage. Now we can see it in the light. What do you think? Uh, it looks like somebody tried to melt the doghouse from the <laughs> outside in. I am really regretting the black already, and it's only been two minutes. There it is. We'll come back and check on it in a bit. We're back out here today and we're going to do some more interior work in Old Harvey here. Um, we had an idea of the floor covering we wanted to do up front by the seats, but it's a little too small. This rubber mat's not going to work uh, exactly how we had planned. So we're going to get some cut pile automotive carpet and put that down and then maybe do that mat in key areas over top of that. Does that sound right? Sounds good. Okay. And we also have to add some gauges. So we've got this nice handy bezel that's not going to be housing a, uh, a stereo um, anymore. We are going to actually put the gauges in the bezel here and then put it back in the dash. So we'll see how that works out. Drop the steering column down, pull the uh, instrument cluster out, and all the wires run behind there. Remember, we're going to put the... Uh, the aftermarket gauge is in there where the stereo were, was. Worse. And so um, all those wiring and connections will have to go to the fuse block and ultimately out to the battery, that sort of thing. So um, I've got to have access. So I'm going to get right. started on that. And Christy's going to run to the store. Yes, I'm going to go get some carpet. Um, before I do that, I want to spray this portion of the floor where the mat is eaten away. We actually looked at whether we can get new mats to replace these and they're just not to be found so figured if we pop a little black in there it might look better than how it looks now okay here we go picasso <laughs> ready yeah oh, oh yeah perfect and that's why i don't Aww. like to give her the spray can. <laughs> Just <laughs> kidding. Uh, she does good work, even if she does hose it on there. It, this comes out fast. Mm. <laughs> I want to push this down. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, yeah. One. She's a one coat wonder. Mm -hmm. And I got to hit this whole spot. Okay. Mm. Sounds like you're trying to extinguish a fire instead of... It comes out fast. <laughs> I didn't point out the runs on the doghouse hey. to everyone, but oh, mm. I, we can, there's still time. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Do you see fingers? <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're perfect. Right. We'll That's see what that looks like when I come back. Oh, you know what? I actually wanted to tape this off. So instead of spray painting it? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Okay. You know what they say about hindsight. Yeah, 
I'm going to actually take the tape off now in the event that there was overspray that I didn't notice so that I can clean it up easier before it dries. Oh. I mean, you have to admit that looks better than it did well, yeah. before. Even overspray wouldn't be a complete downgrade. Look at the back of that tape. Oh, well, I know. Taking weird. that off. Yeah. There's a little overspray. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That's not terrible. I mean, just ignore that and that. The rest of it's perfect. Oh, except for that. <laughs> It does come out fast. All right. All right. Let's see the magic. Like brand new from the factory. Oops. Don't worry, they probably say oops at the factory, too. Just going to pull the old stereo out. No more tunes for us. It was a Kenwood cassette. I mean, I don't know. Can you really upgrade? Yeah. <laughs> Something. That's, um, that's not original, right? No. Uh, I don't think they had cassettes in 76. Eight tracks, probably. We got wires. Like you wouldn't believe. There's the antenna. So I'm just going to snip this out of here. And we'll go from there. Yeah, perfect. I'm back. Hey. Check this out. Right on. Oh, that's Is nice. that as luxury as what you imagined yeah, it would be? Yeah, <laughs> that's like calf skin. It's like felt. <laughs> it's like felt. <laughs> So, how much do you think this cost? Uh, let's see. It's a six foot wide roll. How long did you get her? How much? Six feet by six feet. Six by six. <sighs> Is it less than $50? 15. 15? $15. $15. But man, you yeah. should have bought three times that and we could have just like triple well, layered. <laughs> we'll wrap the whole thing. I know. So, we're just getting back from a sports banquet. We had a good meal, and now we are back in the RV. It's dark outside, so that's no different than the usual for us. Uh, Christy's yeah. got her chalk. She's got her square. She's making some marks and going to hopefully make some cuts. Yeah, you, you have to find the biggest piece of chalk possible. It's got to be green. No, no exceptions there, obviously. Typically meant for sidewalks, I think. Oh, is, but. Yeah, but um, just trying to get some straight lines. Nothing in the RV is really square up here. Like the wall kind of bends in and then the wheel well and everything's a little bit roundy. So um, if we can get it over these seat brackets, then we should be able to kind of just lay it in place and start just trimming around the round stuff. Oh. Yeah. And by the way, the reason why we're not removing the seat brackets to do the carpet is because the rearmost bolts are underneath our angled transition piece there, which is a bear. And I think it's going to be better if we just measure twice, cut once, and layer in there. This is the tape that we're going to try instead of gluing or doing something like that. We're going to try to throw this indoor outdoor carpet tape double-sided stuff down underneath here. We have a piece that is not in place. It's all crazy, but we have a side that could be in place. We seem to tape it down so that as we move over, we're not messing up the side that we just did. So we're trying to show you, you don't need fancy tools. <laughs> you can just grab your kid scissors out of the drawer and yeah. install carpet. Right. Well, this side went in, took a little fighting. Um, we have to tape this part down a little better. 
but um it seems to be working and we're just working our way over i don't know how much battery we have left in the camera but we're gonna keep going So many jobs people take for granted <laughs> until you throw yourself into the mix. All right, we're off work <laughs> and we're here at home working on Harvey and it looks like rain and it's getting dark. So Christy's going to do some more interior work. Yeah, we got the carpet looking decent last night. We need some trim, a little threshold between the vinyl plank and the carpet, some trim around the doors. And then onto the doghouse. We've got to put the doghouse in place. We've got some new latches for it. Um, we're going to add that USB charger in there. Um, that ought to be pretty cool. And then uh, I started on some wiring. It's not going so well. So I'm going to back up and reverse what I did and rethink my thoughts. <laughs> you ready? Sure. Oh boy. Well, it's windy, but at least it's not raining. It's going to get on your pants. My pants. <laughs> oh my gosh. It did not even hit the thing. No. Should I wait till the breeze dies down? I, babe, I don't think the breeze is going to do anything of the sort. Well, it'll dry quick. Well, you might be able to just hold it at one end and let the overspray go all the way down. It basically the is. There. Was it good? Did I get the edges? The neighbor was going for a walk as I spray painted, and I think I spray painted her. Right. Say <laughs> something witty. Action. Oh. It's not witty. Oh. Uh. Oh, not very witty. I don't feel witty right now. I know the kids have been sick this week, and we're on the verge of like, are we just really tired, or are we getting sick? That's the question. So in the meantime, we're going to keep moving. Um, do you see what I did by the door there with your shiny bit? Oh, look at that. Yeah. That's nice. It's now coming I, together. Now I won't stub my toe getting into this monster. Right. Okay. So we have this basic carpet threshold thing. Um, I'm going to put it on actually what might be backwards. I just put some carpet tape on the back. And we're going to lay this here, and I have some shorty screws that I also painted. And the goal is... Am I supposed to use one of my hands? I don't know, maybe. Um, I might have it. <laughs> I hope tell so. Tell me if it looks crazy. Wow. All right. So there's trim here that's going to, of course, butt up to that. We haven't secured that trim, and then we've got to do some uh, work oh, behind the driver's seat here. But as far as the transition threshold... I think it looks pretty good. Okay, well, go with that. Do it. Okay, right, well, no going back now. There, that's a tentative hold. Tape is permanent. Right. I'm hoping these little screws will hold, but painted the screw heads. Oh boy. It'd be nice to melt little pilots in the carpet so we don't twirl it all up when I screw these in but I'm just going to be really careful and assume that's not going to happen. I think it actually held. I just painted yeah. it about four minutes ago so <laughs> I better be careful with how much well, I touch it but that um, is that was not exactly right. I'm wondering if I hit the gap with that one too. I don't know. Oh my goodness. The reason we can't use long screws is because our gray water tube goes under there. And the last thing we want to do right now is puncture that. So yeah, that would not be great. Nope. Dang. Okay. I have to readjust this. Look, that one didn't hold either. No. Nope. Yep. Yeah. Definitely hitting right there where they're like right in here. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to just pull it this way. My fear is that when I screw it, that it's going to pop up that edge. But we won't know until we try. All right, take two. I'm going to try this one because it was the one that didn't work a minute ago. Dang it. 
unless I'd flip it and do it the right way where the screws or I could use the nails it came with and go right in the vinyl. I mean, that's how it should be. All right, does that look straight? Yeah, sure. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Why? Uh, it doesn't want to go through that vinyl. No. This is the stupidest thing I've ever. Okay. Screws? I would say screws. <laughs> oh, look at that. That sounded solid. Worked. There she is. She went and totally redeemed herself. And totally redeem yourself! <laughs> All right, what do you have going on in here? Uh, I have been trying to develop an idea of how I'm going to put these nice three gauges into our bezel here. That's where the old stereo unit went. It's actually going to sit like that. So I've come up with this idea using some of our leftover paneling to come in behind and uh, put it in there. Now what I have to do is take my probably Dremel and uh, get that plastic out of there and then I'll bond this to the back side of that and hopefully I can just drop my gauges in there and it all fits. That's what my plan right. is. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. So we got three different gauges here. These aren't necessarily the most important, but these are the ones that I felt like we needed. So we got an oil pressure gauge. Um, it's a 47 year old RV with factory gauges. I don't know how accurate they are. So we've, we're going to get more up to date onto that. We've been okay with oil pressure, haven't we? It's a little low for my taste, but it holds steady. So not a huge deal. I'm just hoping for an accurate reading. We also got a water temp gauge. Uh, as you may have seen in the past, we've experienced a slight overheating issue. Uh, <laughs> solved now, yeah. but we want to monitor that. Throw that temp. gauge away. We don't need it. Okay, <laughs> next. <laughs> and we got a, tramp, a, <laughs> a trans temp gauge uh, just to monitor our uh, transmission heat. How are you doing over there? He's trying to hide. What did you say? I called it a tramp. <laughs> <laughs> got the bird's eye view. Got her holes. Got her hey, gauge. That's good. Yeah, look, see? Now will nice? they fit? Well, yeah, they're fitting. Why would they not fit? I did all the math that is involved. Huh? Hey. So we'll wind up painting that black and uh, throwing it all together. So here's the old piece that the radio was in where we're going to put our new gauges. And if you didn't see our one video, we showed that even though it looks like this black bar, it's just decorative nothingness. Um, it On these old Dodge vans, there's actually a trans light in here and you can see it really well now. So hold it up to the light. Boom. So there you go. Um, ours happened to be disconnected. The wires were cut like this when we got the camper. So someone decided to fix the old trans light problem themselves, it looked like, and disconnect that. But um, anyway, it's right in there. You're commencing an operation on the Darth Vader helmet. All right, so I'm going to pop a couple holes in here. Okay. We've got a USB thing in my boo. Yep. And a what do you you can't call this what they used to be called anymore? Power port. Power port. <laughs> and the cool thing about this one is you can't see it, but once it's on, it has a little voltometer. So we can see. Is that like a cousin to the odometer? Yes. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
Okay, Darth Vader has eyes. Darth Vader has a nice beard, question mark. Mm -hmm. um, and we're going with, with these. So, nice. um, plop those there. Got to have the words. I don't know, that way. Perfect. Pop them in. Come on. You can do it. So this little kit here is supposed to come with screws. It did not come with screws. Hmm. So we're going to have to find some little black screws or paint some screws. How many times can I say screws? But, yeah. Looks good, except for, you know, the screws. Okay, we've made some progress here on the USBs. This is the inside of our Darth Vader helmet. And we'll wind up putting kill mat over that whole tape over this. But before we seal them in entirely, we thought we'd see if it works. So, you want to do the drum roll? Yeah. <laughs> uh, tell and, me something happened. Oh, wait, there's a power button. Is it really? No, there really is. But oh, good. No, nothing's happening. Uh, I wonder if the battery's dead. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> Next drum roll. <laughs> hey, it was the battery. Joy then. to the world. Twelve point six. Hey, look at or that. Or nine twenty-one. It tells the time too. No, it's just upside <laughs> down, and I read numbers both ways. Oh. And we have a new workbench. Someday we're going to have it an actual shop. Mm. Hopefully, someday soon. We're actually talking to people about. Well, some people call them shops. We call it here in Michigan, a pole barn. Yep. So hopefully we're going to get a pole barn soon. The snow's going to be flying, so we got to do something. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. That works. Let's seal it up. Um, so you wanted to just cover about halfway up and just cover the hole. Cover the hole. So this is kill mat, the same stuff we used. We just happened to paint a few pieces black when we were not sure what we were going to do with the firewall and thought it might be exposed. So this is that same stuff. It's sticky. We'll probably put some tape over it also just to make sure because it's not sticking to a very clean surface under here. You peel back, okay. All right. Ceiling going in. So we looked all over different websites for this um, dog house, gasket, seal, whatever you want to call it. And on some obscure discussion board, they mentioned a website called, I believe it's Mill Supply. We'll put the link there in the description for you. Um, we haven't used it before. We purchased it. It came. It was what we ordered. So we're hopeful that it works. There's just double-sided tape on the back of this stuff. And... Um, you know, I mean, it should do the trick. It's definitely not beat up and smashed down like our old stuff. Do you need me to hold that thing? <laughs> oh, maybe for a minute. There's a staple there. Oh, no, it's not a staple. It's... Some weird. That looks good. Doesn't it? I don't know. I can't see anything. I can't either. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Uh, looks better than Is it. As long as they're stuck down, I think we're good. Okay. I think they're stuck down. All right. Nice. Yeah. Ooh. All right. We're going to head in for the night. We're hoping to be able to show you guys a lot of progress tomorrow. Um, I did want to show you, and you can't see it, I'll I'll put like a uh, daytime picture of it over this, but this is a metal newspaper printing plate that was part of the doghouse, and we could make out some words in it, and it was like something something, 1986, they were building a new bridge in Mayo, Michigan, so that's kind of cool, I mean obviously it's in terrible shape, but somebody lined the inside of the doghouse with metal printing plates. So that's pretty awesome. So um, we'll see you tomorrow. All right. See ya. All right. Welcome back to Christie's Custom Fab Shop. Um, it's a new day. We've got a lot going on. One of the things I wanted to do with this RV since we got it, it's a 1976. It needs the retro wooden cup holder business on the top of the doghouse. So 
We've got the doghouse almost ready to go in. Um, I traced out this top on paper, transferred it to cardboard, transferred that to wood, cut it out, sand. So a um, few little steps there. I don't remember which is the top, but basically this is going to go here. Uh, most likely some Velcro tape on the back. But then I need a second layer where we'll have our perfect little cup holder. So um, stay tuned. Are we going to have a spot for cassettes? You know, most of them online have the little slots for cassettes. I thought it might be handy to set your phone in there, but Ooh. I don't know. I don't think we're going to get that fancy. I'm feeling two cup holders. All right. So while Christy's working on the doghouse, I have got some gauges I've got to get to. So I have got a couple sending units or probes that we are going to be swapping out. This is the one that goes into the uh, water, pump, water pump housing. You can see this is the end that goes into the housing and then this is the end that the wire connects to. It's probably the reason why we were getting some intermittent readings in the water temp. Um, but anyway, I've got the new probe. I'm going to put that in. The same exact thing is going into the back of the, uh, the transmission. There's a spot for that. And I've got that in there already. I can show you where that goes. And then I've got to swap out the sending unit for the, uh, the oil pressure. All right, this is where the probe has gone on the back of the transmission. Pay no attention to the uh, oil that's splattered all over the pan there. But that wire will eventually be hooked onto the end of the probe there, and we'll run that to the gauge. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it on. <laughs> Wait, this, this is the back? I don't know. So I got to wear it like that? No, you got to wear it the other way. <laughs> <laughs> How am I wearing this? All right. You, I, don't, you don't have to wear it. It is full of fiberglass, and <laughs> I don't think that that would be good for my hairline. Oh, shoot. Well, I thought it would be good if you could put on. It would kind of give like a space balls kind yeah. of vibe. It know? sure would, but um, no, I can't bring Halloween? myself to it. I can't no. do it. Okay, <laughs> fine. So we're going to set this in place temporarily. Um, you can see the wires coming out for the chargers. We put kind of a quick disconnect on here so that when we need to remove the doghouse, we don't have to mess with wiring. Let me go to the and, passenger side. Oh, he's going that way. It's easier. This is just a dry fit <sighs> to see where the cup holders actually would need to go. You may have to help. Because we know the most important thing of a vehicle is the cup holders. Perfect. That looks great. I want to wreck our paint job. Actually, okay, the black is kind of growing on me. Now, the weird globby business on the front either we cover it with this same carpet or we get some kind of cool retro leather maybe oh. or um stickers i mean we bought a sticker last week when we went to the state park maybe we just get stickers everywhere we go and sticker right over that business that actually looks decent oh man nice yeah. I'll do some measuring and start cutting my top layer for the cup holder extravaganza. Okay, sounds good. Okay, it's been quite a while since I've checked in last. Uh, oh, I see a lot of wires. Good work takes time. Uh, so what I've got going here, I've got all my uh, my power wires connected together. These are the daisy chains between the, the gauges, okay? And I used green for ground. Don't worry, it does go to black eventually. Uh, and that is a chassis ground. This red wire for the power is going to go to the fuse panel. It'll be a switched on 12 volt. And I've got to wire my three uh, sending units into the gauges, which is oil pressure, water, and transmission. Now, when so, you say switched on, you mean 
comes on with the key. Correct. I'm going to forget about the little lights for the moment. Um, I'll come back to those because I have to figure out my, my dimmer switch over here, which is a little bit odd. But anyway, I am close to having this together. And as soon as that happens, I'll show you guys what it looks like. Okay, I'm back. Your seat's beautiful. You look like you're ready to go for a ride. <laughs> it's a lazy boy recliner for sure. Um, so anyway, yeah, I got the gauges in. I got them wired in the fuse panel. I got them grounded. I got the battery hooked up. I am ready to give it the test and I haven't hey. tested it yet. So when I turn the key, we'll see if uh, success or failure. Wait, do we need the fire extinguisher handy? I no. did buy a new one. Where, yeah, where is, is it? Is it in there? I don't know. I think it was oh, in the It is seat. right here. We'll oh, just okay. leave it in the box. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So one pump, two pumps. Is anything happening? Uh, so they don't register accurately. <laughs> Got over 100 pounds of oil pressure. Water temps at 240, cold. Oh, the trans is working right. It hasn't come up yet. So we have two that are wrong and one that's on zero. And that's the one that's the best? Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, let me figure out what's going on. All right. All right. I got to check some connections. And I mean, I got power. I got a ground. Maybe not a good ground. I don't know. Uh go around and check all the different sending units and see what they're telling me. I bet, you know, it's like one of those tachometers where you have to switch between four, six, and eight cylinder. I bet I had it in four cylinder mode. Oh. Probably it. No, that's not it. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, so yeah, let me, uh, let me do some tinkering around with it and we'll get back to you. All right. So I'm just going to go through and check my connections. Um, I was looking at the different sending units. Every, all the wires seem to be in place correctly. Um, the green wire here is my ground wire going there to that black wire. That's my chassis ground. Um, I do not have any voltage on that. Here's my red wire going to my switched uh, accessory down on my fuse block. Turn the key on, should have something. And I'm not getting any voltage there. Okay, so that's weird. So I've got my power disconnected. I've got my ground disconnected. But let me show you what's weird. I can hold this up here real quick. I'm going to turn the key on. And I get a bump out of my water and my trans temp. Those gauges should be a mechanical slash electrical sending unit, like down there. That is the, uh, the oil pressure sending unit. The white wire comes up and goes right in here to, oh, now I see what I did. So my white wire should have been going to my oil pressure, not my water temp. The water temp should have been the red wire. So let me swap those and see if that makes a difference. I've got my wire switched around. Let's see if this makes a difference. Oh, they've come up just a little bit, not a full sweep. That's something. Well, look at that. Well, that just goes to show you, you should check your connections. So I just started doing an oil change. Uh, while that's running out, I'm going to go ahead and tidy up this uh, fuse block on the backside, put that carpet back into place, and uh, get things cleaned up in here, and hopefully take it for a little test drive. All right. Oil change complete. How'd the, um, how'd the oil look? It was a little dark, but... Tended to be expected at this point. Everything uh, we do is dark at this point. Yeah. <laughs> so we're ready for our test drive? Let's try it. Okay, so I think that it might be time to get rid of the plastic bags. No, 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 no. Yeah. It's like your grandma's house, you know, when she had the plastic on the couch. No, this isn't grandma's house anymore. Oh. This used to be, but this thing, can't see it at all. We'll show you <laughs> with some lights on, but... It is looking good now. Well, I would like to start it up and everything to work out the way we had anticipated. You ready? Yeah. Oh. 
All right, this is how close we get to our garage yeah. <laughs> to park here. All right, let's go. All right. Oh my goodness. I still think we might need to paint that whole thing black right there. Did you make it big enough so I could have a big gulp? I have no idea. Should we go buy some drinks? Yeah. See how yeah, it yeah. works? Sure. All right, let's ditch the bags. This All is right. a big moment. We will have to take the seats out again oh, to replace the speakers. We wanted to do it in this video, but we just couldn't find the exact ones we wanted and didn't want to put something in that we weren't going to like. But definitely we'll show you some lighter views of this. But from where we started till now, we've come a long way on this cab. That was so quiet it is in here. It is so much quieter. <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, we're not, we're just... It's like normal. It's seriously quieter than the excursion for sure. I mean, that's diesel, but... Well, we're not up to uh, speed of any sort either, but... Still. So we didn't intend to do a moonlight test drive, <laughs> but, um, you know, it gets dark early and things happen. So gauges are looking good. Um, temp says 180. Oil says... Well, the oil's just doing what it wants. It's, well, it'll fluctuate as the RPMs come up. Oh, okay. So that's like 50 when you hit the gas pedal. Trans is still down, so we'll monitor it to see if it's actually working. And the cup holders, most importantly, are ready for some oh, drinks. Here comes somebody. Although we do need to get some um, clear coat on that. And then the phone charger, it's saying our battery's at 14.3. So... That's awesome. Yeah. So here we go. I can't believe how much quieter it is. I mean, that video where we went camping, the last one, the, the audio was terrible because either we were in here and it was loud and or we were at the beach and it was so windy um, and we had new mics and they didn't work right and they tried to noise cancel and it turned it into like background weirdness. But um, yeah. This is quiet. Just a quick gauge check here. Uh, oil pressure, eh, I wish it was doing a little bit better. It's hovering around 15 at idle right now. When you uh, when you bring it up off of idle though, it starts getting more normal. Uh, temperature looks to be about one, eh, we'll say 190 right in there. And the trans temp is coming up, which is good. So everything yeah. seems normal. I'm glad they're working. It's a peace of mind. All right, here it is. Tyler's checking out all underneath. We got some drinks. Try the cup holders and hopefully everything maintains. All right, this is a big moment for me. <laughs> oh, nice. yay. That worked I got out. a little one. It's probably going to tip over, crying out loud. All right, here we go. We're just pulling into the driveway. The trans temp definitely came up, so that gauge is working. Oil pressure is not looking so great. Um, temp, water temp looks awesome. So I think successful with the gauges. We might have to figure out what's going on with the oil pressure, no? Uh, it's probably just old and doesn't have good oil pressure. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, don't go anywhere just yet. We're going to put some before and after pictures of this cab rehab up for you so you can really see the difference of the, the last week or so of work that we've done. We have a lot left to do on Harvey. We're going to go next weekend. There's a parents weekend and tailgating at our daughter's college. So we're hoping to make it there for that. I say hoping because last time we didn't quite make it when we were planning to, but this time I have a better feeling. So hopefully we get there. Confidence is a little bit more high this time. We've already taken it camping once, so that's something. Um, we do have a laundry list of things to do. I wanted to add a tack with the other gauges, but it just didn't work out, you know, time constraints and whatnot. So that's in the works. Also wanted to say thank you so much for watching. We appreciate you guys. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. You know, hit the like button. We read your comments. Go back and check out our other videos and uh, stay tuned because, like I said, a laundry list of things to do. Yeah, a lot on Harvey, and we've got some other projects up our sleeve too, so you don't want to miss out. All Thanks right. for watching. Take care, guys. Bye.